Let's head on over to Taldarim Altar. Pack your bags. We're going back in time to when Protoss vs. Turn was absolutely epic on this map. <laughs> NASL has some fantastic matches. TSL3 has some epic matches oh, on Taldarim yes. Altar TVP. In fact, uh, that was one of my favorite series of all time. MC vs. Thorazane and MC vs. Puma. Even Naniwa vs. Thorazane. Naniwa vs. Thorazane was great. That match was so cool to watch. I was like, oh my god. And if you guys didn't know what <laughs> happened, he went three barracks and double starport. That's what was so mind-blowing, because we haven't really seen that in the scene. And still haven't really seen that in the scene. Uh, but Colossus were a lot more prominent in that period mm -hmm. of time. Yeah, it was Medicaid. still a Colossus-dependent TVP, and like people like Thorzine would use ghosts against Colossus and win. Yeah, that's what was so mind blowing. It was like, oh, I don't have any, I don't, I don't have, have any, any Vikings. Vikings. Oh. No problem. I guess I'll just use ghosts <laughs> <laughs> and Marauder positioning. Yeah. So he actually just used ghosts, like 200, 200 army. <laughs> Killed his own. SCV. He sniped his own SCVs with ghosts. Did you know? In SCVs the are like, what did I do? This is what you planned. <laughs> in the alpha of StarCraft II, ghosts had range nine. And like Void Rays <laughs> had insane range too, right? It was pretty crazy. Uh, yeah. Well, in the beta, they I miss Flux Veins a lot, man. That was a great. That was a great oh upgrade. Oh my god. Speed Void Rays. Not oh. so much, Frodo. Can you imagine what Hero could do <laughs> with Speed Void Rays and Speed Prisms? Yeah, how and much I would cry that, would, I that? would be awesome. Rotterdam would be ha would have <laughs> the biggest buff to <laughs> his sickest life, Anaheim <laughs> open bracket run <laughs> ever. All of a sudden, Rotterdam's like, he's just like, how are you? Why are your Void Rays so much faster than everyone else? He's like, I don't know. Flux it's pretty good. <laughs> Look at this. We see Hasuwab scouting. Hasuwab's is the red Protoss in the top right corner from Team Mousebore. Scouting the bottom right against EG's the Muslim. And you can see that both players are still opening up very similar. You know, uh, the Muslim going for pretty fast expands. Same thing with Hasu. He's always been being very limited on gas and uh, just being very exact with their builds. And that's pretty cool because that means both players are really confident that they're able to outplay each other and just really stick to their guns and this is this is good statement. Yeah, I'm far. actually surprised. The Muslim is a player that's known for, you know, abusing his players or his opponents, um, knowing their style so well. So I actually assumed that he was gonna go for a fourteen CC or some sort of command center first build. But no, he plays absolutely standard, goes for the uh sixteen command center I believe it was. Mm -hmm. Or seventeen command center, one of those. And is just gonna play it straight up. Really cool. And the Muslim gets the scout in, sees, you know, only two probes on gas, like you were saying. Full saturation on minerals. I think uh, Titan does this a lot. Titan Over does this. Uh, the other player that does it a lot is Sasa. Sasa does it a lot too, yeah. I love his build. He actually gets a second assimilator to really mess with the Terran's head. Mm -hmm. So it could be some sort of one base all in. And it also gives him a lot of flexibility in terms of transitioning a build. Correct. If you want to go fast robo or. You know, even something crazy like Fast Twilight and uh, go for like a really quick tech. Look at this, a gas deal from the Muslim. This is something we don't see that often Cheeky. in TVP. Normally this is impossible because you clean up the SEV before. Uh, this can obviously this can happen, but he knows the Zealot is already being sent out in the middle of the map. Wow. So he's like, well, you have no units actually to defend against this. I'm going to go ahead and punish you. And so the Muslim should be fun. safe back at home. Yeah, it forces him to go for three gateways before, um, you know, before an assimilator, second assimilator, which obviously allows the Muslim to know exactly where he's at. And uh, the Muslim does end up uh, not finishing that refinery, just going to cancel at the last second. But also, I mean, it gives him some pretty decent, very minor information, like you can see the probe transfer and whatnot in the stalker. At this point, you can see Stim starting up for Demuslim, staying on two racks, going to tech up accordingly. Now, these positions on Taldry Malter make for some interesting, interesting play. For example, it's really hard for both players to take their fourth gas. Just because Colossae can poke at it, Marauders can reach from the low ground. And it's going to be really important because you're never fully comfortable taking your gases. And so as a result, tech play can be hit, you know, towards the mid-game. And also, these positions allow the Muslim to do some pretty wonky aggression from both sides of the main. He can drop from the left side and the bottom side. So Haas is going to have a harder time holding off drops compared to Ohana. That's exactly right. And it will be very frustrating, in my opinion, for Haswabs to actually take a third base because as soon as that third base is taken, there's another 
place of attack where Hassops can take advantage of his opponent. So I love that so much that you brought it up. And, uh, you know, we'll see how Hassops actually deals with that because th this is a pretty standard thing that you have to deal with, especially on ladder. I mean, this is a ladder map, so we can have the potential of actually, you know, going through a, a phase where he just changes up his build quite dramatically to deal with these positions. Yeah, and so now that we, we've had time to explore both players' builds, uh, wh what would you recommend now that the Muslim, I mean, he's the one who picked this map, what do you suggest? Like, should he still be putting on mid-game aggression, shutting down Haas's play, or, or what? Is he, does he have to macro a little bit harder, try to see if he can play a little greedier? What would you recommend to Muslim? Say you were coaching right him at this spot. I would tell him to go double starport every time. Immediately? Because, yes, because you know Hasselobs goes for... Well, get three barracks. So from here, get your third barracks. Get your fourth assimilator. Uh, fourth assimilator. Fourth refinery. <laughs> and then go for your second star port. And the main reason for that is because your opponent's gas is funneled into Colossus play, and you know that, oh, or at least true. you're you're assuming that. He's been selling sentry with Colossus the entire exactly. time. Exactly. There's a gigantic window where they need to switch over with upgrades, number one, and uh, when I say upgrades, I mean like plus one, plus one, mm -hmm. and the uh, other upgrades, which is Blink and Charge. If they don't have that, then Medivacs can be empowered like crazy. Just having that plus one, plus one, or just the plus one weapons attack enables you to deal with everything very efficiently. So just have your Vikings just kill every single Colossus. You don't even need your Marines and Marauders to engage in that fight. Back away as soon as that happens, and then your Marines and Marauders come up, and it's gateway units against uh, Marines and Marauders. It's really, really efficient, and you have a nice medevac count to actually boot. The Muslim going to move out the same time he always does, around the ten, nine and a half, ten minute mark with reinforcing medevacs. This, uh, similar as we were pointing out, is under siege, and that's going to limit hostiles significantly. 25% of your gas intake, especially if you're trying to go for double forge upgrades, very annoying for uh, any Protoss player. And with that, Hasu has a pretty decent probe count, but not really able to capitalize on some of it. Now, the big thing is that there is one Colossus about to pop out, and it's not going to be in position of it, but the Muslim's like, well, where's the Colossus? And knows that it's not there, but it's going to finally join up. And with that, the Muslim can have some pretty interesting options in terms of uh, aggression. He can drop, he can also try to see if he can go from multiple angles. But with that Colossus, as long as Hasu gets in position, he's going to be pretty safe. So, so he backs up. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and that's good. And that's see, good. if the Muslim did heed my warnings, he would be in a fantastic position. Because remember, you don't even have the ability to get your stalkers. And especially with what he's seen so far, double forge upgrades, I mean, he should know. My opponent doesn't really have the stalker count to actually defend against mass Vikings. When I say mass Vikings, maybe I, I mean 16. That seems really <laughs> excessive. But when you're on double starport production, that actually happens really, really fast. Four rounds, and then just go, go endless medevacs. And you're actually pretty self-sufficient. You can do it off of two bases and uh, constantly produce units. So it's all around very efficient. Instead, the Muslim is going for what we saw in game number one, which is seven racks. I love this play as well. Don't get me wrong. This is still very strong play. It's just more micro intensive rather than uh, exercising just decisions and trying to build order counter your opponent. Hasu has great vision, covering almost every avenue possible from the Muslim short of his uh, right side of the, the third ramp. And he knows his push is coming. He has Thermalands finish, plus one, plus one, about to finish as well. And yeah, can, can the Muslim put on the aggression in time? Now, Hasu has a couple timers that would help him a lot. Blink, if it finishes for any some reason before the, the Muslim's able to finish him off, will allow him to really capitalize against the medevac count. The Muslim preparing some SCVs also for the trip. Some of them saying their last goodbyes, writing their last love letters. Uh-oh. Their wills. Here it is. The SCVs are shown. Wow, that's a ton of SCVs. <laughs> and Hasu Ob's nose. Immediately, cannons are spawned. That's great. Wow, I love that. If he can get enough time, but because of these spawn positions, that, those cannons shouldn't be able to finish unless the Muslim kind of hesitates. Now, uh, sentries can force you to buy more time for Hasu Ob's. Uh -oh. Uh-oh. Stalkers aren't in position. Uh oh, where are they? Oh, they're back in the main. Four seals immediately to try to deny it. <laughs> yes, very nice job there. And now look at this game. Where do we see the 2-2? Two -two? Non-existent. That's beautiful, Frodan. Yeah, Hoswabs knows he can't afford the 2-2 two -two this exactly. time. Exactly. That's so cool, man. Yeah. And he's he's doing the correct response. Look at how many stalkers there are this time around. And he's getting blink. Yeah. 
I told that's you, it blinks about oh, to Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right, that's yeah. right. No, no, you know, and with blink, that changes almost everything. And now we have an interesting position where the units are trying to flank up the ramp. But oh. Blink catches the Vikings off guard. The Muslim forced to try to fall back, at least for now. And the units they are reinforcing are immediately cut off. The Muslim has some free shots on the Colossus, though. And these force fields are providing to be extremely valuable. Great job and control from Hoswabs thus far. But he's not done just yet. The Muslim, he committed a lot to this attack. And he's pre on 10 on finishing it. And you can see the Zells are going for trying to tank damage. But look at all the units clump up. And you can see the Colossus are still doing so much damage to everything. The Muslim trying to kite back as far as he can, but with that, there's not enough supply. Hoswabs able to really defend in a strong fashion with just Marines and Marauders and one Viking. Nothing really the Muslim can do. Tries even snipe the Colossus. He does a great juke there, but uh, all these units are going to drop, oh, and that's wow. very tough indeed there for the Muslim. There it goes. The Medivax down. That's the critical blow. The Muslim only had a measly 36 Harvesters. He has to remake Harvesters. But he can't do that because he's under so much serious threat with Colossus inbound to his uh, to his base. Now, where does Hasselops go with this? Expand. <laughs> he doesn't want to try to <laughs> kill his opponent. He doesn't want to leave it Just up to get chance. A huge advantage. He's getting an expansion two two. But remember, there's still that threat. The Muslim still has to defend against an incoming push. So now he's just getting further and further ahead economically. Hasselwabs is still maintaining, maintaining his advantage and making it so that he will never be able to lose this game. Yeah, and Hasselwabs getting charge and plus two, plus two. And if he finishes plus two, plus two before the next push, just it's so hard for the Muslim exactly, to really yeah. deal with anything. The Muslim immediately taking out these rocks at his third, knowing he's got to make something happen. Oh, look how cheeky they are. Oh, but wow, Hasuabs. I mean, you know what's so great about it is because he's keeping this observer alive. Ooh. And he's able to really pick off things like mules and, and really target down the appropriate units uh -oh, and getting uh -oh. all the stalkers out. Or some of the stalkers out. Nice foresight by the Muslim, stemming units on the bottom ground. Uh, but he picked off those mules, which is quite substantial. Income tab, 35 to 52. They're almost equal. <laughs> Don't want to go into a... Discussion about mules. Mm -hmm. 4.5 workers. And even then, he's pretty behind. Uh, it's 42 SCVs to 54, essentially. And you can see at this point, Hasawabs about to finish plus two, plus two. Now Storm is on the way. And with Storm, that's going to be lights out as uh, it would be the Hasawabs hurricane, and Demazum would not be able to survive. And you can see that a uh, few Colossus are now out into the field, but not going to make overmake them anymore, which is good. Hasselhoff's really focusing on his upgrades. What can the Muslim really do? He's forced to attack also because he's just made non-stop units. No workers have been in production this entire time. And this is a huge follow-up push from the Muslim, but Storm is about to finish. It, it's, Hasselhoff would be actually okay to give up this base, but he's going to try to defend it. It's kind of an awkward concave. Jumping off his ears. Look at the charge lock trying to get into the battle. Blink backwards, but the force fields are working <laughs> against him. <laughs> Oh wow. my goodness. <laughs> the storm is just about to finish. Oh no, Marines and Marauders are stemming right into the force. Now the uh, expansion is given up here, but does it really matter at this point, Frodan? So many SCVs are lost, and that could be seen as a job well done. Win right there. Mm, but yeah. storm is finished. I mean, this is so advantageous for Hasselwabs. Uh, Marauders are on their third stem, too. I don't see how there is a way to, to actually defend against Ooh, this. Ooh, look at how weak those Marauders are. The Muslim knows that he can't keep this up. And so he's trying to fall back, but these Stalkers can keep blinking oh, backwards. Four. Another stem. Oh, my gosh. And we have one medevac in production. GG gets called out, ladies and gentlemen. The Muslim takes his first loss in the North American Star League to the hands of Mao's CC Hasuops. Congratulations to Hasuops. Beautiful play. And a great, I guess, um, adaptation yeah, to game number a great, one. Uh, yeah, a great response over the time. Like from game number one, knowing how to hold off the push. And I think it's cool. It's just because, again, adapting to your opponent, reacting, knowing this is what cost me to, lo to lose. Yep. And having that ability to recognize what to change in the series is what makes a good player from, like, a professional. Just, like, able to consistently play in these series. And that's why Hoswabs is great. That's why, all of a sudden, the top three in this division is not necessarily just the Muslims anymore. Yep. Now, if Hero loses next week, the Muslim wins, Hoswabs doesn't win or something like then the Muslim's still number one but all of a sudden you never know crazy things can happen 
And uh, all of a sudden, Division is no longer belonging just to the Muslim. We yeah. want to thank GameMind, the smartphone application that reminds you about upcoming NSO broadcasts and for upcoming game demos. Download it at handlelabber.com. But we'll have more information for that as well as everything at the end of the day. Recaps, predictions, as well as looking forward to announcements and the Sunday showdown. Don't go anywhere. We're about to finish off Division 2 here at Week 8 of NASL.